My name's John Ward. I'm Professor of Molecular Biology at uh, University College London uh, in the Department of Structural and Molecular Biology. Uh, my research is on using bacteria to do uh, various uh, useful things. So I, my group builds uh, new metabolic pathways to make interesting chiral chemicals. I'm also interested in using viruses that attack bacteria, so-called bacteriophages, but as nano-structured elements to be able to build new objects uh, and entities that might be used for optics and uh, electronics. So those would be biological electronics. We need to mix these, don't we? My name's Jane Gregory and I work in the Department of Science and Technology Studies and we're interested in science very broadly. We're interested in the way scientific knowledge is made, who's got it, what they do with it. We're interested in the kinds of reactions people have to science. We're interested in the way politicians use science or refer to science. We're interested in the way science is regulated and controlled and the way it's promoted and used, for example, in the economy or in healthcare. So we're interested very broadly in the way science has a life in society beyond the lab, beyond the fundamental ideas about nature. We're looking at how does science make a difference to the world outside and the world in which we all share. <laughs> My name is Alexandra Daisy Ginsberg. I'm an artist and designer and the design fellow on a project called Synthetic Aesthetics. And we wanted to create a way to have a nuanced and sort of subtle discussion about the issues raised by synthetic biology. So this week we've tried to um, find as many different ways of exposing issues and trying to find new issues through lab practicals, lectures, discussion sessions so that we can um, engage a, a group of people to go forward and investigate the field. To me, synthetic biology has now become uh, an umbrella term for several disparate but related aspects of using biology to build things. I think the, the idea is that if we now know or think we know enough about some parts of biology, we should be able to use that knowledge to build new things, new entities based on that knowledge. And so, for example, we can start to think of using individual enzymes that we understand well, take the genes for those, and put them together in an order uh, that they don't exist in nature, but designed so that they will make a brand new chemical compound. So that's synthetic pathway building, and uh, that's some of the things that my group does. So synthetic biology is the almost the engineering of biology, using the ideas of engineering, taking components, that's the biological elements, and building new things uh, to make useful products with uh, biology. <laughs> so what we'll be doing is using gin, blue curacao and the enzymes in fresh pineapple juice to make <coughs> To extract DNA from strawberries, which you should see if you do it correctly, and it won't be our fault if it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> precipitating out between the layers of the drink. What, where am I, what's my reaction best? What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. In one of these. Blue curacao. So you need to tilt. Who spilled this? Me. <laughs> you, you like to make it difficult for me, don't you? Yeah, this isn't a spectator sport, is it? <laughs> So I know what. And you will drop, drop um, puree onto the gin, and wisps of DNA will precipitate into the gin. Really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> has anyone got a dropper? <laughs> okay. Uh, I need something to. <laughs> I just need to dig some pineapples in the mouth. Oh, you're really going through. Oh, it is my job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can see wisps. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. I didn't think that would work. <laughs>
The Synthesis Exchange Lab that we ran at UCL in July 2011 was an idea that grew out of a group of people, several different groups, some people from Western Australia, an organisation called Synthetic Aesthetics, who are based in Edinburgh, and an arts production group called Arts Catalyst. And their experience with artists was that there was a lot of interest in science among artists who were looking at science as another window on the natural world, as a place where new forms emerge, where there are new ways of visualising things, where there are techniques of creating and displaying. And these groups came to me and said, do you know some scientists who might be interested in working with us? And this was at about the time when John Ward was setting up the Symbiol Network and we thought this would be a really exciting thing to be involved with. So we just left the actual jump, should we flip it? Or? No, 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 this, okay. does this, um, this do it? Oh, no, it doesn't, so bring the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, the yeah, No, it's fine, I didn't want to. Alright, should we go? Uh, yeah. And they will open this super cold and this one here. Well, one of them's clearly wet. This looks really good you know, because it's, everything is gone apart from a single band. The PSTs work very well, and your double digest, where you've got the two ends on as well, is only partially worked again. So the new band for the linear, but it's still got quite a bit of super coiled in the outer circles left over. So it should have been the same. It should have been, well, it should have been actually a bit smaller with another band down here. In some ways science is a kind of closed club because scientists don't routinely have to interact with um, lay people in order to be a scientist. I mean you could go through your entire career never talking to anybody else as part of your professional life. And there's a lot of shorthand going on, there's a lot of assumptions about other people having had the same training as you. And our, uh, training for scientists is really quite narrow so you do spend a lot of time while you're becoming a scientist only meeting people who are having the same kind of training as you so in that way it's it, it does take skills and it's not just that some people are friendly and some people are shy it is really thinking about how other people might see you as a scientist, not, not just as a person, as a personality, but as a scientist and approaching them in the spirit of openness and looking out for what they might have to contribute or think about you. Maybe each time they choose a slightly different band so they yeah. explore. Yeah, exactly. Change the radius. But I think if what they do is raise questions about what they've learned, if at some point it becomes part of a conversation somewhere, that they had this experience, that maybe some people can see that that's being expressed in the work, that would be good. These things are notoriously hard to, to track. but it does seem reasonable to think, just because of what we know about the way communication works and the way culture works, that having those talented creative people here with us for that week will make a difference to somebody somewhere and these
cultural changes, they're slow, they build up, 